Tim grew up on a grain farm with wide open prairies of, in North Dakota, uh, which gave him an appreciation of the outdoors and nature. His wanderlust started when he was two years old, often wandering across cow pastures accompanied only by his dog. He would go home with lots of stories about what he had found. In later years, he started taking photos of where he had been and what he had been experienced so that he could show and tell others about those experiences. After graduating from North Dakota State University with a degree in business, he moved to California and found work as a financial analyst. With the outdoors beckoning, he left his career as an analyst and moved to Ventura County in the late 70s. He found himself working as a ranch foreman, giving him enough time to take up photography, and he has been honing his skills ever since. He has been a professional photographer since the early 1990s. His photographs have been featured in numerous publications throughout the world, including Islands Magazine, Sunset, Asia Pacific Travel, Mini World, Explore, Terra Sauvage, Dove, South Africa Times, USA Today, National Geographic, Smithsonian, and many others. His list of published books include unique destinations such as the Himalayas of Nepal, South America's remote Patagonia, the rugged wilderness of northern Manitoba in Canada, South Africa's remarkable world heritage sites, Ventura County, and of course our national, our Channel Islands National Park. In addition to having his work displayed in numerous solo and group expedition exhibitions, Tim's work is also part of a permanent art collection at Santa Barbara's County <coughs> Hospital. Uh, a respected photographer, he is frequently asked to judge photography competitions and give talks and workshops, and he's also available for private workshops uh, to destinations around the world. His book will be available uh, afterwards. He'll be happy to sign it. It's $40, that's tax included. And so please join me in welcoming Mr. Tim Hopp. Thank you, Greg. Thank you everyone for being here. It's uh, really uh, a pleasure to be here, to share my experiences of the uh, Channel Islands and to see so many of you uh, in attendance uh, expressing an interest in wanting to see uh, and learn a little bit more about the islands and if you haven't been out there. A little bit about my experiences on the islands. I've been traveling back and forth to the islands for a little over 20 years now with a camera on hand. This is my third book on the islands, uh, so I've acquired a little, little bit of knowledge on the islands, uh, what to see, what to experience, and, uh, and, and what's out there. And uh, what I'd like to do this evening is uh, it's a two-part presentation that I've got. The first part is going to be just uh, showing slides one by one. Uh, just click through them, talk a little bit about it, give you a little bit of an orientation as to what we're looking at and which island that we're looking at. If you have any questions during that time period, feel free to uh, jump in and ask, uh, because the second half of my presentation this evening is a uh, a DVD. Uh, it's an audiovisual, so it's intended to play all the way through. It's about 20 minutes, a little over 20 minutes, and uh, it's intended to sit back and relax and enjoy the uh, music that goes along with the uh, images that I've got. So without taking too much more time, why don't we uh, get started on uh, the Channel Islands National Park and National Marine Sanctuary, California's Galapagos. Called California's Galapagos because of the many unique endemic species that are found on and around the islands. Uh, incidentally, uh, half the park is located underwater. So my concentration is on the islands themselves for the most part. Uh, in my book, I've got a, a couple of pages uh, that are underwater photos, uh, so, but I don't include too much of that in my presentation this evening, just so you know that, but uh, literally 50% of the park is underwater. So one of the first places that I've been to, and I think a lot of visitors uh, to the Channel Islands like to go to, is Anacapa Island. And one of the primary spots on the island, uh, my favorite spot for photography anyway, is uh, Inspiration Point at the west end of East Anacapa. East, uh, Anacapa Island is divided into three islets, East, Middle, and West Anacapa. East Anacapa is the island that, uh, well, most visitors uh, are able to get access onto. It's one of my favorite spots for photography because no matter what time of day, what time of year, what the weather conditions are like, it's always different. Uh, as you can see, uh, still a foggy day and it's still a rather interesting uh, 
photo itself. In the background, in the far distance, is uh, uh, West Anacapa. It's off limits to the uh, public because uh, primarily of the West uh, of the uh, California brown pelicans that grow uh, that are nesting on the islands. They nest there for about almost 10 months out of the year. The only spot on West Anacapa that is accessible to the public is this area known as Frenchy's Cove. And on the left side, which is the south side of the island, it's uh, popular as a uh, tide pool destination for school groups, particularly during the school year. It's a good spot for, island, uh, for school kids to go out and learn a little bit about the uh, sea life, the island life, and so on that's uh, on and around the islands. Well, as I mentioned a bit ago, West Anacap is off limits to virtually everyone, except on occasion a few researchers will uh, uh, gain access to the island when the pelicans aren't there. Last fall, I had the opportunity to uh, accompany some, uh, a couple of researchers, and I st was able to stay out there for a couple days. And this is the view from the top of West Anacapa, looking back east toward Biddle and, west, er, and east Anacapa. In the far distance are the Santa Monica Mountains. Well, as I mentioned, the West Anacapa is a primary destination or a nesting site for the California brown pelicans, which is the reason it's off limits. This happens to be a male uh, pelican. You can tell that it's male because of the red plumage under his bill, uh, and it's uh, in the uh, breeding uh, season. Uh, it's in his breeding plumage, which is why it's red. The islands are in, uh, called the Galapagos of uh, California or North America because of the many endemic species of uh, birds and other animals on the islands. In particular, on Santa Cruz Island is the Santa Cruz Island scrub jay, found nowhere else on the planet only on Santa Cruz Island. It's a deeper blue than the jays that we have here on the mainland, and it's also a bit larger than the uh, jays that we have here on the mainland. And of course, you have cormorants uh, all over the islands, uh, but especially around San Miguel and Sa uh, Santa Rosa Island. This photo happens to have been taken at the west end of Santa Rosa Island. These are pelagic cor uh, cormorants. This guy happens to be a Scripps's Merillet, also a very uh, rare bird uh, on the endangered list, but it's making a comeback. This guy happened to catch a hitchhike ride with us as we were coming back once from Santa Barbara Island on our, uh, for a stop at Anacapa Island. Just uh, flew into the cabin of the boat and just sat there and uh, just rode along. So, uh, and it just happened to be on a boat that was full of uh, bird researchers that were banned out there. <laughs> I was out with them. We were looking all over the ocean for some of these birds and, uh, to band, and uh, this one flies onto the boat, so <laughs> it worked out. Now, Peregrine falcon uh, is making a great comeback along with the uh, bald eagles, and the uh, peregrine falcon is making great comebacks on the islands right now, uh, primarily because of the, uh, eradic or the elimination of DDT and and other efforts. Uh, the uh, bald eagles actually were reintroduced onto the islands uh, a few years ago after the golden eagles, which were on the islands, were uh, taken off. The uh, golden eagles were all captured. They were all removed uh, to the uh, mainland of California, and then the, uh, uh, which gave the bald eagles uh, room and uh, ability to uh, reproduce and, uh, and, and continue on. I'm not sure how many uh, Successful uh, eaglets were uh, fledged this year. I heard, but I don't remember. Uh, but it's, it's quite a number. 15? Is it 15 or more? Somebody should know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was, it, was a, it was quite a few. And there are uh, eagles on each of the islands that I understand right now as well. This is a raven. And I have this in here because he didn't want to be left out of all my unique birds. <laughs> anyway, uh, other animals that are endemic on the islands and making a great comeback are the uh, island foxes. This happens to be on San Miguel Island. They have made great efforts in, uh, in uh, reintroducing, well, not reintroducing, but uh, keeping the foxes alive. And, and uh, these guys were all virtually on the uh, brink of extinction just a few years ago. Right now, there's about five, 600 uh, fox on San Miguel, 800 on uh, Santa Rosa, and over 1,000 on San, uh, Santa Cruz. 
so a, a great su success story in conservation, rest, uh, restoration and conservation. Not a nice idea whatsoever to feed these uh, foxes. The ones that you see around the campsites and the, and the uh, landing areas at the boats don't look nearly as healthy as those that are off uh, fending for themselves in the uh, wild. Other animals uh, that have uh, come back from being decimated a number of years ago are the uh, uh, pinnipeds, seals, northern elephant seals, uh, California sea lions, uh, northern fur seals, uh, harbor seals, and so on. Uh, and these happen to be on San, uh, San Miguel Island. And uh, the previous shot was elephant seals. This happens to be California sea lions you know, warming themselves up on some rugged rocks as elephant seals seem to take over the uh, nice sandy spots. Usually, you find the uh, different uh, species of uh, pinnipeds on, on their own beach. Uh, northern elephant seals will be on one beach, and the next beach down will have the California sea lions and so on. On occasion, you'll find uh, them all congregated together, such as they were right here. You have the uh, California sea lions. You can tell those because they're the small ones. And the uh, elephant seals. And the bull in the uh, middle of the photo, uh, you can get an idea on how large they are because the, uh, uh, just with the uh, different uh, sizes of the different animals. The uh, sea lions actually are around a, uh, what, a two, 150 to 300 pounds or so, and then the, uh, so that gives you a good idea on how large they are. Meanwhile, the rest of the gang is uh, sunning themselves over on the next beach over. Uh, it's a female that's throwing the sand on top of herself to uh, protect herself from the sun. Right next to her, right there, you can see uh, one of her newborn, or a, a pup, probably about a month old or so because of its size. But they, this was taken in February a couple of years ago, and the pups at that time were ranging anywhere from a few days to uh, about six weeks old. You don't have to necessarily go out onto the water to see the other amazing creatures that are around these islands. These are uh, gray whales on their southerly migration. This was taken on New Year's Day this past, uh, this past New Year's. This was taken, on, taken from Santa Cruz Island, looking at them as they swam by. The day that I, I was out there several days, but this particular day I probably counted two to three every 15 to 20 minutes all day long. It was amazing. It was an, an incredible migration this past spring, or winter actually. Other animals? The uh, humpbacks, always fun to see and uh, watch them do their thing, swimming about. Uh, I like the way the, uh, the uh, pectoral fins uh, shine through the water, the iridescent uh, color of them. This particular humpback has, uh, if, you, if you notice, a bit of a brown patch on its, uh, on its back, just ahead of its uh, dorsal fin. A bit unusual, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I haven't asked anybody uh, what it is. I just, we just saw this maybe about three weeks ago, two to three weeks ago. So uh, that's a photo that I'll probably send to someone at some point and try and get some idea why that patch is there. Because normally the humpbacks do not have that patch. There happen to be two humpback whales in this photo. One of them you can see coming through the uh, water on the uh, right of the image. And then the second one is right in the middle hasn't come, hasn't uh, surfaced yet. What you're seeing that looks like a fountain are, are actually sardines or bait fish escaping from the whale that's coming up through the water with its mouth wide open, ready to gulp them all down. The humpback whales are always fun. They're the most gregarious whales. They'll, they're friendly. They'll come and visit us often uh, when you're on the boat. And sometimes they'll just come up and say hi. Uh, this spring, this summer actually, the water in the channel is uh, much warmer than it has been in a number of years. A lot of the whales are, have moved to the uh, cooler waters out past probably uh, Santa Rosa and especially around San Miguel and so on where it's much cooler. So off of our Cal uh, Santa Barbara and Ventura coast, it's been a bit of a challenge for the uh, boating companies that do uh, whale tours to, uh, to see them. This was taken, well this was taken just this spring, uh, well, three weeks ago. Other whales to be seen, one of the largest animals ever to have roamed on the planet Earth, the uh, blue whale. This is a, a cow and her calf. And it's a nice sighting to see the, a cow and calf paired together like this. And of course the common dolphins, 
always fun to see, always fun to, for me at least, to take photographs of um, whether they're leaping, whether they're feeding, wh whatever they're doing, chasing the boat, uh, riding the uh, boat, wake, boat wake, or just swimming alongside on really calm waters and giving uh, somebody such as myself an opportunity to try some creative photography for a change. These uh, bottlenose dolphins doing a little bit of uh, synchronized swimming, not to be outdone by a couple of common dolphins also doing synchronized swimming. And these three common dolphins need a little training yet to get the uh, rhythm down pat. But these, all these uh, recent photos, I took these uh, about two to three weeks ago. So it's relatively recent and the, the animals are out there, it's just a matter of finding them. And you never, who's going to, never know who's going to find you when you're out on these islands as well. This uh, surfer was out at East Point on Santa Rosa Island. And uh, he was just minding his business, looking, waiting for the best uh, breaking wave to come along, to surf along. And I was on land, of course. And I happened to see this bull uh, sea lion off in the distance, maybe a third of a mile away, barking away, just really upset about something. So I looked at him, watched him, and I noticed that he was looking at this surf guy, swimming toward him just full speed ahead. He swam right up to him, stuck his nose. This is probably about a foot away from nose to nose. Looked at him and uh, decided he was okay, wasn't a threat or anything, and swam off. <laughs> One of my favorite beaches on the islands is uh, Smuggler's, uh, is the uh, beach at Smuggler's Cove. It's very flat, when the tide is low, and it's, uh, when it's an exceptionally low tide, uh, you get these incredible formations on the sand, you get these great uh, reflections on the rocks, or on the sand of the rocks in the background and so on. Uh, and this is a, just a cloudy day. If it's a sunny day, it's even more incredible. And if it's an, an exceptionally low tide, you can uh, go to the uh, end of the beach itself and uh, do some tide pooling as well. On Santa Rosa Island is a group of oak trees, island oak trees that are rather unique, rather, for me at least, always seem to be a little eerie. Uh, you see them poking through the uh, clouds on, the, on this evening and you get down into the trees and they still look eerie. They're all gnarly and uh, holes poking through them and the fog is kind of drifting through. You can let your imagination run quite wild quite quickly in that spot. In fact, I had some friends with me one time and one of them had to leave because they thought it was haunted. <laughs> Another grove of trees that's rather unique are, is also on Santa Rosa Island, a bit lower down, uh, are the uh, Torrey Pines. What's unique about them is they're found nowhere else on the planet except at, uh, down by San Diego at La Jolla. Uh, so on Santa Rosa Island and, at, and down by San Diego, it's the only two places you're going to find these uh, torii pines. Uh, I understand there's probably about 4,000, 4,500 trees or something like that now in the grove. So uh, and lots of seedlings all around. Oh, 24,000. Okay. So the other uh, estimate I saw was a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Good to know that. Thank you. Summertime on uh, the islands as it is here on the mainland, is, is usually quite dry. This is on Santa Rosa Island, but even though it is dry and the grass is brown, you still have flowers such as this, the uh, 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 summer blooming red buckwheat. Uh, and what's nice about it is it's so brilliant against, against this dryness all around. And uh, I don't know for sure, uh, you may know the answer to this. Uh, I was told that it may be uh, an endemic species of plant on the island, but the uh, biologist that I was talking to did, or botanist that I was speaking with didn't know for sure and they were uh, looking into it. So it's possible. If it isn't on the, the endemic to the island, it is endemic to the channel islands nevertheless. If you have the opportunity to visit the islands in the springtime, it's always a real bonus. Uh, the flor the uh, flowers on the islands are becoming very uh, abundant right now. Uh, even this spring, as dry as it was this winter, the flower bloom on the islands was phenomenal, especially on Santa Rosa, Santa Cruz. This is on Santa Cruz Island. It's along the uh, North Bluff Trail. It's one of the popular trails. And it's just a few years ago, I would walk along this trail and I'd never see uh, the uh, Coreopsis blossoming like this. 
This is on Santa Rosa Island. And uh, these are uh, uh, Indian paintbrush. And there is a, a variety of Indian paintbrush that is endemic to Santa Rosa Island. And this was taken this past spring. And you can see that it's just amazing with the uh, flowers. Also on Santa Rosa Island over on the north shore of the island near Orr's Camp. Santa Barbara Island, although tiny, it's only one square mile in size, is really a great island because of the many different plants on that island that are endemic to the island. There are at least five, maybe more, uh, uh, plants that are specific, uh, uh, that are endemic to uh, Santa Barbara Island only. This happens to be the Santa Barbara Island cream cup, found only on Santa, Santa Barbara Island. Meanwhile, on uh, Santa Cruz Island, another endemic plant found on Santa Cruz, nowhere else, the Santa Cruz Island uh, Silver Lotus. This is taken on the top of a Montonian Ridge. Also this past spring, this uh, is a Humboldt Lily taken in Smuggler's Canyon. I was, uh, it was a treat to find this particular flower because as one of the uh, people that works on the island, he said he had happened to see he happened to see this uh, lily growing in Smuggler's Canyon. And uh, he didn't tell me how to scale up a 15-foot cliff to see the darn thing. <laughs> but I did. I found it. And uh, it, was a, it was a special treat to find it. Of course, my uh, strong point in photography is uh, landscapes. At least it's, uh, that's what I started doing. And I still enjoy doing landscapes quite a bit. This is, uh, And I enjoy doing the uh, landscape photography around the islands because of the uh, variety of coastline particularly. This is on Santa Barbara Island. This is Webster Point, looking out toward uh, Sutil Rock in the, uh, on the right and uh, Signal Hill on the, uh, or Signal Peak in the uh, far distance. On Santa Rosa Island at East Point is, I also like this spot because of the uh, different types of uh, colored rocks that you find. This happens to be, of course, covered with uh, mosses and so on. Gives them this nice green look, but you just walk around the corner 100 feet away and you've got barren rocks that are nice and pink. Uh, so lots of variety in a very short distance. Santa Rosa Island also, this happens to be, uh, uh, well, it's Betcher's Bay. And uh, this happens to be at the mouth of Water Canyon. Water Canyon is where the campsites are. So most of the campers that want to watch a sunrise walk down to this spot, only a, only a short distance from their tent. Or if you want a little bit more solitude on Santa Rosa Island, you go to the south shore of uh, the island. This happens to be around Ford Point or St. Augustine Point along the south side of the island. Uh, it's one of the on only spots on the island that uh, you can do uh, backcountry or beach camping. Terrain can vary quite a lot. As you remember from the previous shot, was a nice tranquil beach. This is a very rugged Badlands type uh, topography on Santa Rosa Island toward the west end of the island. Or if you go to San, San Miguel Island, you come across this amazing formation called Caliche. Caliche is uh, basically, in a nutshell, I suppose, it's uh, the remains of a tree. The tree died, the cavity filled in with sand so it, it, and it calcified, so it's actually the calcified uh, casting of what a tree, where a tree once stood. It took me two hours walking in the dark basically to get here before the sun came up. And once the sun came up, the fog rolled in as well. So I had about 10 minutes maximum time to get uh, the photos that I wanted. Santa Cruz Island is well known for its uh, sea caves, kayaking around the islands, kayaking into the sea caves and so on is very popular. This happens to be on the Nature Conservancy portion of Santa Cruz Island, on the, toward the western end of the island. This happens to uh, be a, a set of caves called uh, Cueva Valdez. And it's actually a three-chambered cave, so it's actually quite a unique spot to go and investigate once in a while. But the most popular cave and most well-known cave on the islands is uh, Painted Cave, also on Santa Cruz Island. It's uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, cave on uh, at least the west coast of North America, or all of North America, probably. A little bit of debate there, but it's uh, arguably among the largest. It's about a quarter of a mile deep, and I believe it's about 140 feet or so high at the entrance. The, the uh, tour boats that you can go out to visit these islands, they take you right inside the cave to uh, uh, and go in uh, probably about a third 
quarter of the way or so, not too far. And that brings us back to Anacapa Island and the uh, signature rock at Anacapa, which is Arch Rock. This is the uh, DVD. I'm not going to talk through it. Just go ahead and enjoy it and uh, I'll talk later.
Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. As you can see, the islands, Channel Islands National Park, National Marine Sanctuary, it's an incredible place, not only on the islands themselves, but also on the water, not only on, on the surface of the water, but on the, under the water and the sea bottom as well. It's a remarkable spot. I thank you all for attending this evening, and uh, I'll take any questions if you have any. The question was, uh, the, which, what was the dolphin that had a lot of markings on its skin? Uh, if it's the white one that had some white modeling, yeah, that's a Riso's dolphin. And there were probably about five or six in that group, yes. How has life changed on the island since the uh, pigs have been removed from Santa Cruz and the black rats from Anacapa? To begin with, um, Anacapa, uh, bird life is thriving on Anacapa Island right now. You could see the, uh, the uh, gulls, the gull chicks, the pelicans, uh, the nesting colonies have uh, uh, grown uh, quite a lot, as well as the uh, Scripps' murrelet and uh, uh, a couple of other rare birds that are now nesting on and around the island. Santa Cruz Island, with the removal of the pigs, the first time, uh, well, it was in the El Nino year, 1996 or 7. I went out there shortly after a big rainfall. And the pigs were still out there then. The hillsides looked like they had been dug up by a rototiller. Uh, there was so much erosion. The rains were uh, particularly heavy that year, caused extensive er erosion. Uh, the pigs were eating everything. They were rooting, uh, uh, just like rototillers all over, uh, eating uh, the roots of succulents and so on. So yeah, the plants are definitely making a comeback on, on, and animals on both islands. Were they able to re eliminate all of the pigs? Yes, every pig is gone. <laughs> well, how about the rats? All, all the rats, the rats are, are gone. yes. The question, are, are the rats all gone as well? Yes, all of the rats are gone. The question is on the underwater photos, if they were mine, uh, no. I am not an underwater photographer. I, I don't do any uh, diving myself. I used to a number of years ago, but I don't do that anymore. I never did learn how to take photos under the water. So all of the uh, uh, underwater photos were taken by underwater photographers that uh, uh, either donated or uh, provided the photos to me. Uh, to include in the uh, book and in the uh, uh, slide presentation. It's important that I have underwater photos because as I mentioned, half the park is underwater. And uh, so I don't want to just concentrate on the surface because it's, it's more than that. It's much more than that. And everything that goes on on the islands also affects what goes on under the sea as well. Yeah. I'm asked that, uh, which island is my favorite? I'm asked that every time I do a talk or presentation. And my standard answer is, it's like asking a parent which of their five children is their favorite child. <laughs> each one is different. Each one is unique in its own respect. Uh, Anna Kappa I like uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's close to the mainland. It's easy to get to. It's got the lighthouse on it. It's got barking seals or sea lions all around the island. Whenever you're on the island, you know darn good and well you're on, on an island out in the ocean. Um, Santa Cruz is great because you, you can hike until your heart's content there. Uh, Santa Rosa, same, same thing. San Miguel, I like because it's so remote, so far removed. You know you're a long ways away from civilization when you're on uh, Santa Rosa Island, or Santa, San Miguel Island. And also I wanted to comment on Santa Rosa Island. To me, it's like stepping back into California's history maybe 150, 200 years ago the way the California mainland may have looked at one time. Santa Barbara Island I like because it's very tiny and it has a great diversity of uh, plants and animals all around it. It's got seals, uh, elephant seals, sea lions, got birds, uh, the, uh, uh, the murrelets and, uh, and uh, pelicans, gulls, whatever you want. Okay, thank you. Thank you.